I'll bet you've never seen one of these things before. It's an electromagnetic chain and it's transferring power from my right hand to my left hand through nothing other than magnetic and electric cores. And we're going to look at it in this video. But before we do that, I'm going to put it down because it is getting heavy and my arms are getting tired. So here's our EM chain and it starts with a toroidal transformer that is powered by 120 volts AC and that 120 volts is going to about 500 turns of copper wire around the toroidal core and toroid is really just a mathematical name for a shape like a donut. So 500 turns creating a magnetic field circulating in the iron toroid and then I have a toroidal shaped copper pipe that is essentially forming a one turn transformer winding that is connecting this toroid to that toroid electrically. So here we have a magnetic loop here we have an electrical loop. This electrical loop is carrying current into and around the toroid and creating a magnetic field in this toroid, which in turn creates a current in this copper loop, which in turn creates a magnetic field here which makes another current in this loop and then finally a changing magnetic field in our final toroid which after 500 turns of copper wire is powering this 120 volt Christmas light. So that's probably about the hardest way you can transmit power from here to there. But the wonderful thing about it is we can see a lot about the properties of electric and magnetic fields and currents. And that's what we're going to do today. So the first interesting thing we should do is take a look at the currents through our one turn coils. And to put things in perspective, that's a seven watt light bulb, or maybe it's five watts or something like that and it probably uses a few tens of milliamps. So, how many amps do you think would be traveling through these electric one-turn coils? Well, if the regular transformer equation is to be believed, and we have 500 turns powering this light bulb, the current in a single turn should be 500 times that current. So let's take a look. Would you care to guess? There you have it. About 23 amps, which is quite a bit. Now, what do you think happens if we look at the next coil over here? Oh, it's gone up to 27 amps. And if we go to the final coil, now we're at 32 amps. How come we're getting more current as we move away from the light bulb and towards the source? Well, maybe the way to investigate that is to remove the light bulb. No more light bulb. Do you think there's any current here? About five amps. So what is that five amps? Well that's the magnetizing current that's keeping the magnetic field going in this toroid even when the toroid is not powering anything else. If we move back one, how many amps do you think that is? Well it should be the magnetic current for this toroid plus the magnetic current needed for this toroid. And what do we have? Nine amps. So if I was a betting man, I would guess we're at about 15 amps over here 
and it's showing 14. So that was a pretty good guess. That's a lot of current, but we're not actually drawing any significant amount of power. So what's special about this current? Well, this current is at 90 degrees compared to the voltage on these incoming wires. And similarly, it is at 90 degrees compared to the voltage across the copper coils. What do you think that voltage might be? Well, that voltage is about one five hundredths of the line voltage. And if we hook up our trusty meter to it, what do we see? We see about 0.22 volts. And that in, is indeed the voltage that is being imparted on each one of those copper toroids. Now, there's nothing special about each one of these toroids. So what I think we'll do is we'll just add some light bulbs so we can see what's going on. So I'll reattach the light bulb that we had down here and we'll add a light bulb in the middle. And you might be asking, well, what is this light bulb proving? Well, it's attached to 500 copper windings around the magnetic core and it's proving to us that there is a changing magnetic flux in that core as we would expect and we will do the same thing for this core over here and if we wanted to we could do the same thing over here but I'm not going to do that because this is 120 volts in so we know what its voltage is and just so you know this is through both a GFCI and an isolation transformer. One interesting thing about the setup is it's already beginning to show us some of the very fundamental properties of the universe. And the first property is the symmetry between electric and magnetic fields. And you can sort of see that because all the magnetic fields are pretty much in a circle and all the current carrying components where the current is essentially pushed on by an electric field is in a similarly shaped circular component. The other thing is that the magnetic elements tend to be at right angles to the electrical elements. After all, these electrical toroids are pretty much horizontal and the magnetic toroids are pretty much vertical. And what that's actually doing is showing us a couple of Maxwell's famous equations, which I'm going to show you very quickly, beautifully illuminated by our light bulbs. The first equation is Ampere's law, which basically says if we have a current flowing through a certain surface area, an area within a circular loop, we generate an H field, a magnetic force field around that loop. Well, can we see that over here? Yes, we can. We have a current flowing through a loop. Here is our loop and so the current flowing through the loop is generating an H field, a magnetic force field through the loop. The second thing Maxwell's equation shows us is that if we have a changing magnetic field going through a surface within another loop, we generate an electric field along the outline of that other loop. And once again, you can see that here, we have a changing magnetic field, a magnetic flux field going up and down here, and it's going through this 
electrical loop path and it is generating an electric field along that path. And while these equations may not mean too much for you, if you haven't had calculus or vector calculus and Maxwell's equations, one thing you can probably appreciate is the two equations, one relating magnetic force to current is almost identical to the second equation relating electric force to changing magnetic field. And what we can see very nicely from our transformers are the two circular loops, this loop and that loop. So these toroidal shaped things are really performing a circular path integral. And the interesting thing is the other sides of the equation is almost the same, except this part of the equation is missing something. Here we have electrical current, but we don't have magnetic current. We don't have magnetic current, which I've drawn in dots, because we don't have magnetic equivalents of electrons, which are called magnetic monopoles and I looked them up one more time just before the video and so far nobody's ever been able to definitively prove they have found a magnetic monopole. So there is a little bit of asymmetry. The interesting thing is these equations are set up so that if anybody ever finds them they have a place right there. But the other two parts of the equation are identical. This is the changing magnetic flux field. This is the changing electric flux field. The magnetic flux field is a flux that we normally associate with a nice strong magnetic field. And the changing electric flux field is the flux we get in situations like across the plates of a capacitor. Anyway, I wanted to show you that because those equations very nicely correspond to the components of this electromagnetic chain. So what happens if we short this coil? All the lights dim. And if I hold the voltmeter here, we can see that about 110 amps is flowing. Well, what's actually happening? Well, by shorting this, if the copper had no resistance and the connection here had no resistance, what we would be doing is essentially ensuring there was no voltage along this loop. In other words, no electric field along the loop. And if there's no electric field along that loop, it means there can be no changing electric field inside this toroid. And if there is no changing electric field inside that toroid, it means the toroid is not generating any back voltage, however small, on this loop over here. So this loop now looks like it has been shorted. It doesn't have a toroid in there. And so this loop is shorted. What does it do? Well, because it's shorted and there is now no electric field around that loop, it means that there can be no changing magnetic flux inside our toroid, which in turn shorts the sloop, which in turn shorts the sloop, and finally which in turn shorts the 500 copper wires attached to our power input. Now, the light's only dimmed as opposed to going out and that's because this thing has a considerable resistance and so we're only getting about 100 amps going through it. And incidentally, all of these things have very low resistance. However low they are, it's still not enough for the types of currents we're going to be dealing with. But 
if we wanted to see what happened if we had a great big thick copper wire and shorted it here and we wanted to measure the current to see what we'd be getting in this loop well we can sort of cheat and do it there's our ammeter and I have over here a nice shorting wire and what I'm going to do is short the 120 volts going to the 500 turns of copper wire which will produce an almost perfect electric short around our toroid which will collapse the magnetic field in the toroid to essentially nothing this loop now will have no back voltage so the entire might of the 0.2 volts that's being generated by our first transformer core will be used to drive current through this loop and well right now it's showing 71 amps what do you think the current through this copper pipe is going to be when I short it do you think it's going to be 10 amps or 100 amps or a thousand or close to any of those you have two seconds to figure it out all right have you locked in your answer let's see what happens I short it the lights go out and what do we see we see about 830 amps and I'm gonna stop doing that right now because I don't want to burn out things um, it is worth pointing out that this copper loop now has gotten very hot from those 800 amps and if I left it on much longer you can imagine that the solder that I used to make the loops would start melting and the other thing that might happen is depending on how much was power was being consumed we might start melting our primary copper windings so how much power was that well to make things simple we'll say 800 amps and the voltage that the loop exhibits is about 0.2 volt one loop through our coils so 0.2 volts times 800 amps is about 160 watts well these transformer cores are each rated at about 180 watts so that's not a bad number it also means that our copper primary windings are not going to burn up because the amount of power that's being consumed by this coil is indeed within the rating of the transformer now if we had a bigger winding perhaps instead of a piece of copper tubing a copper rod and it was able to carry much more current a couple of thousand amps maybe then what would happen is we would start drawing enough current to power that through our 500 windings and beyond their rating they'd start getting hot and melting and bad things would happen so that's a very quick overview of an electromagnetic chain I did say at the beginning that I'll bet you haven't seen this before but that wasn't entirely true I've seen this at one other place before and it was a museum and what I'd like to know is if anybody has seen it in a museum and where that was and if you tell me I'll tell you later where I saw it and I'll give you a hint it was not on this continent so I hope you liked that video see you next time